wow. This, I just can't, I can't get over how effective these lures are. It's got that triple rolling action, just like rolling cats. You fish it much faster. You fish are in an aggressive mindset here, and they are just slamming. Nice bend in that rod. We were going along about 2.5 miles an hour. And he just slammed it. I don't think I've had the, the baits in the water for two minutes. Hit it so fast I was surprised I had a fish. Still out there a ways. I was down about 14, 15 feet. Hybrid lead core rig. Here we go, we're in the top 25 feet now. Oh, nice fish. Nice fish. Woo. Right there, crippled minnow spoon. He smacked that. Came out in the net. Nice. Awesome. Look at that beautiful fish. What a beauty. Get him back in there. There's that spoon right there, Cripple Minnow, in the rainbow trout pattern. We'll get it back in the water and see if we can get another one. Man, that was a tremendous strike. That was about six feet deep on the uh, watermelon colored Cripple Minnow. I don't know how big that fish is, but he hit like a monster. He's still bending that rod pretty good. He's not back that far. Like I said, that was only six feet deep. Oh, wow, he is fighting. We're going about 2.6 miles an hour. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Man, oh man, that's that's just tremendous. You know, you give them that crippled look, that rolling bait, and it just triggers that predatory response. It's crazy. It's like rolling shad, but this lure can be run at you know a variety of speeds, and uh, we are trolling it fast and aggressive today. We got this, got this surface chop, and uh, it is working. We've caught two fish here in about ten minutes. And uh, this one feels real nice. Let's see, he's getting close. Oh yeah, what a beauty. Look at that, holy man. Oh, he came off. Oh, got a fish on the crippled minnow here, guys. Six feet deep, 2.4 miles an hour. Feels like another good one. This is about the fifth fish we've got on it so far. He's biting him nice and gentle, man. He is, uh, is strong. Oh, some major head shaking going on down here. Look at that. Look at that. Wow. I'm keeping a low rod here to keep him off the surface. Now he's coming my way. Wow. This, I just can't, I can't get over how effective these lures are. It's got that cripple rolling action just like rolling shad, but you can fish it much faster. These fish are in an aggressive mindset here and they are just slamming it. There's no other lure like this out there that draws these kind of strikes. It's just, uh, just very unique, very impressive lure. Right there, baby. Off the hook, look at that fat rainbow. Look at that studly fish. He is fat, he's heavy. Get him back in the water. And uh, of course here is the cripple minnow in that watermelon color, man. That is just a killer lure and uh, it, is, it is putting big fish in the boat today. Get it back in the water. When it comes to catching trout, is it better to have a bait that's an exact match of the forage the fish are feeding on? Or is it better to have something that is similar in appearance to the forage the fish are feeding on, but not an exact replica? If you're a fly fisherman, you know that a, 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 a offering that is similar to the forage, but not an exact replica, is often the most effective offering. You wanna match the shape, the basic shape, the basic size and the basic color. Here's another question. 
we're in a lake, a bait fish lake, it might be Folsom, Don Pedro, Shasta, Trinity, wherever. We're at a lake where the trout earn their living feeding on threadfin shad. There's big clouds of shad in the lake, the trout are cruising around. What triggers the feeding response in the trout? What makes them, you know, focus on one single shad, run up, grab it, and swallow it? What attributes make that happen? What is it about that bait? Well, I'll tell you, it's the same attributes that make lions in Africa focus on one antelope. You've got a bunch of antelope, they're running all over, they're all healthy, but you have one out there with a bad leg or one that doesn't feel well, one that lags behind, one that acts funny, one that's limping, that's the antelope the, the lions are gonna target. That's the antelope that's gonna get eaten. The weakest member of the pack. The same is true for trout. They're gonna focus on the bait fish that isn't swimming right, the bait fish that falls behind, the bait fish that looks injured. And when you think about bait fish going through the water column, they move very fluidly very straight, they cut right through the water. When you see a bait fish that's in distress, they shake, they wiggle, they don't move very fluidly. They look like they're in distress and that is the shad that the trout are gonna focus on. That's the shad that the trout are gonna eat. So when you're selecting lures and you wanna trigger that predatory response, it's very important to pick lures that give off that effect. Lures that look like they're injured, an injured bait fish, and that's where the crippled minnow comes in. This is a rolling bait. Now, rolling shad is extremely effective at lakes that have threadfin shad because that rolling shad, it looks like an injured shad. It looks like a shad that's not swimming right. The problem with rolling shad is twofold. One, at a lot of lakes, it's not legal to roll shad. Up in the high Sierras, there's no shad rolling going on. It's illegal. The other thing is, is it's difficult to keep shad, prepare shad, and effectively rig shad for a lot of anglers. It's a, you know, it's a big hassle. You gotta tie the leader, you gotta brine the bait, you gotta have bait that's the right size, you gotta have bait that's got perfect scales. There's a lot of details that go into rolling shad effectively, and that's why I came up with this spoon. It matches the shape and size of threadfin shad. It's got the giant eye on it and it rolls through the water column and you can use it at a variety of different speeds. We're out here at Collins Lake. We've been smacking the trout on the crippled minnow spoon every day. It's a rolling bait that anybody can fish. It matches up well with a lot of lures. You control it at 1.8 miles an hour if you're rolling worms. You control it at 2, 2 miles and at 2.2 miles an hour if you're running a trigger spoon on your other rod. You can run it at 3 miles an hour if you want to pull a Rapala and you want to speed troll. So it's a very versatile spoon and most importantly it matches the size and shape of shad and it gives you that great crippled motion that really elicits that predatory response in trout, kings, bass, predatory game fish. Anyway, that's just something to think about. If you'd like a set of crippled minnow spoons, get on over to the fishhuntshoot.com website and uh, you will find them there. I wanna thank you guys for all the support. Thanks for watching the channel. Take a second to hit that subscribe button. You'll always know when I'm on here talking about fishing, tra uh, fishing tactics, trout tra tactics, whatever. Be safe out on the water, wear those life jackets and uh, I will catch you next time right here on YouTube. Show them a cripple bait and you're gonna be yelling fish on. That's my advice, I'm Kel Kellogg.